fans or sponsors or what have you, uh, creates such a huge awareness around it that I think teams will actually for some time be more careful than ever, um, which is the, the purpose of, of penalties anyway is to eliminate it from happening again, so to speak. But I would also tell you that we're, we're, we're uh, experienced enough to know that it's on us to continue to monitor it and to find new ways through technology or, or steps that we may take to be sure that the garage area is reminded that, that someone is still concerned with this topic and we'll continue to keep after it and watch after it. But um, I think since we we made the announcements we made in Chicago to the group privately and then to the public, uh, it's it's been reacted to very respectfully, and and we'll continue to to look at ways that we can continue to remind them that that we don't want to do that again. Go to Bob. Blair and Dustin. Bob? Uh, Bob Parker, Sporting News. Uh, Dario Franchitti announced yesterday they would not race again because of the risk of uh, future serious injuries. Uh, do you look at that decision as a validation of your implementation of impact testing for next year? And do you think it will impact the opinions, pro or con, of the, doubt, of the doubting drivers of your implementing that policy? I don't, I don't know what effect it might have on that. I think it has a huge effect in all the motorsports industry when a, when a caliber, a driver like Dario says that he's not going to get back in the car. Um, and, and that's fairly final. Um, I'll, I'll, we um, heard from one of our more significant participants last year when Dar Dale Jr. said, I'm, I'm going to take myself out for the rest of the season. Uh, or for part of the rest of the season, for for uh, uh, for safety's sake, and 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 those moments are huge in the industry, um, and I, I I think it it I won't use the term that it validates uh, motorsports interest in safety or uh, uh, medical steps or things that we do to protect our drivers and our fans and our team members, but. I think it is certainly a reminder that our sport is still dangerous and the effort around safety across the board should never be um, given up on. Uh, Dario is a, a very significant motorsports figure. We, we enjoyed him when he was in NASCAR. He's, he's, he's not only a talented race car driver, he's just a talented individual and a very personable person. So. Uh, the the good thing is is he was able to do this in his own terms, so to speak, uh, and we wish him the best and and hope we see him at some of our races, uh, you know, sitting on Ganassi's box or wherever he wants to sit. Uh, but uh, I think at the end of it all, it's a it's a reminder that our sport uh, still has danger attached to it. Okay, we're going to go be able to take three more questions. We're not going to be able to get to everybody, but we'll go with Claire, Dustin, and end with Marty. Claire B. Lang, Sirius XM NASCAR Radio. Mike, can you expand on the unprecedented investment in our sport, be it PR team members or marketing technology, the NASCAR Fan and Media Engagement Center? Was that to right the ship or things that maybe should have been done maybe a bit earlier for the sport? And then can you expand on the Fan and Media Engagement Center, what you're finding out about the fans of NASCAR? Yeah. Uh, to your first question, I think it's just a function of a good business decision, the decision to to be relevant and modern. Uh, I think along the way, I think the, the 65 year history of our sports, you can go back and you can, you can look at big decisions that are made by Bill Senior, by Bill France, and by and Brian France. And they were key decisions that were made for the next band of years, if you will. And so I think the investment in the competition and R&D around innovation and technology is one of those major moments that Brian uh, says that this is 2013 and, and we, have a, we have business relationships now with major stakeholders through 2024. And so what does our world look like in that, that, that stretch of 11 years. 
and so from that comes the decision to invest in in one of the most visible pieces of our business, which is the sporting event, which is the races at the racetrack. And so I think that's more what drove NASCAR's decision to, to do what we're doing. You're going to have to help me remember your second question. It was the, the Fame Center, yeah. I'm glad you brought that up because I missed touching on that. It's it's uh, the, the Fan and Media Engagement Center is on the eighth floor of our Charlotte office. Uh, Hewlett Packard is our partner in this center, but it's, it's uh, Brett Jukes and his folks created a, a, a very technologically driven center that gives us the ability to um, monitor uh, our fans and our industry 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And, and in today's world, that's, that's critical. Uh, because uh, things happen so very quickly and and reaction to those things are important and I think that's what you see NASCAR doing but it it starts with the ability to have a good understanding of what's going on around you and in, in a digital social media world uh, that center is paramount to helping us understand what's going on around us and so it helps us make decisions that they're loyal and they're very opinionated, and that's a good thing. Let's go to Dustin, and we'll end with Marty. Dustin? Dustin Long, uh, Motor Racing Network. Uh, Mike, this year NASCAR's had to penalize multiple drivers for comments or things that they've made in regards on social media, regards to slurs or stereotypes. And I want to ask you, what is NASCAR's responsibility in dealing with this in the sense of stopping this before it happens. And I, and I mention that because I think other sports kind of have symposiums or what have you with younger drivers kind of going over the ins and outs of things as they come into the sport. And you've talked about how this, how there's so many younger drivers coming in the sport. The age has been reduced. This is, this is probably an issue that's, that's not going to go away. So what is NASCAR's responsibility in doing this and, and why not a symposium to address this before you have to penalize somebody in the future. Well, I, I think the whole industry has a responsibility to that, and, and one of the big assets of NASCAR is so many stakeholders involved. And with, from a driver's perspective, he has a relationship, obviously, with NASCAR. He has a relationship with the team owner. He has a relationship with the team members, the team sponsors, and he has a relationship with the fans. So that's it's universal for all of us to, to have a, a, a role uh, in helping the driver understand what's okay and what's not okay. As it comes to new drivers that come along that may lack the experience of understanding the ramifications of, of things like that, uh, NASCAR uh, began a, um, a rookie symposium. Cassidy, how long ago did we start that? Three years? Okay, so 14 will be our fourth year of our rookie symposium, and part of that was to to lay out the 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 minefield that that you're that you're getting into beyond the racetrack itself, um, and 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 very specifically, and I'm sure 14 will address it even more as we see the progression of social media being such a, a, a part of our everyday lives, of the the ramifications and the expectations from NASCAR as well as there are other stakeholders that, that to be aware of this type of thing. Final question over to the right, Marty. Marty Smith, ESPN. Good morning, Mike. Uh, you've been doing this 35 years. You've seen the greatest of all time in the greatest moments of their time. What do you see out of Jimmy Johnson? How would you describe his Cup Series career over the last 12 years? I don't know that there's a definition for it yet. And and those that have been around in the sport for a long time have seen the evolution of the definition of the greatest driver in the greatest moments, uh, which is what sports is. I mean, it's sports is the only re true reality show that exists. And so it has, uh, it has those moments. That's what makes sports sports and so entertaining. Um, so it's it's the first thing you want to do is you want to compare Jimmy to uh, a, a driver that preceded him, 
uh, based on statistics or, or what have you. The, the fact of the matter, though, is, is, is uh, I think Jimmy, the definition of Jimmy Johnson as a driver uh, is yet to be determined. Uh, but certainly, every season he participates adds to that definition. Uh, the, the, uh, I think history books are more kind to you than current moments are. But nobody can dispute the, the talent that he's got uh, and the organization and the continuity of that organization. Uh, I don't know if we've ever had, and, and Kerry and his guys can bow, I can't recall a, a driver and a crew chief that has stayed aligned other than Dale Inman and Richard Petty for so long, so many events, under so much pressure and continue to perform at the level they have. Uh, and I think it goes both ways. I think it complements their performance, but their performance complements their relationship. Uh, so I, I, it's a long answer to a short, uh, really what should have been short. I just don't think the definition of Jimmy Johnson has been completely capsulized yet. Mike, as always, we appreciate you coming in. It was good hearing from you. Everybody have a good weekend.